Welcome back. Uh, this is Sachin again, and today we'll be discussing about um, some of the caching strategies. And as like always, um, I'll be covering uh, the sample application, which you can check out and try on your own. So uh, let's get it started. Um, all right. So uh, first thing first, let's quickly go through uh, uh, the some of the uh, well-known caching strategies. I just Google it, uh, caching strategies, and pretty much go to any of the links, and they will tell. This is the one which I looked uh, just before recording this. Um, okay, the first one, uh, cache a site. As the name says, it is a site. Uh, so basically, this is your application, and you want uh, to retrieve some information. And of course, um, because uh, you want to retrieve from cache, you first go to cache. Uh, this is step one. Uh, if you get the data, fine, you return it and use it. In case you don't get it, it's just a cache miss. Uh, in that case, you go to the database, get that information, that is step two, store it into cache, so the next time you come, at least that uh, is present over there. And then uh, once you are done these three steps, you return that and use your object. So that is, is cache aside. As the name says, cache aside, because your, uh, your application cache or database, they are like, you know, uh, sitting uh, next to each other, basically your cache and DD. All right, um, read through cache. Um, here, uh, the application doesn't talk to database directly. It will always work with cache. Let's say, okay, uh, get me some information. So uh, let's say uh, if you're working on a list of employees and you say cache, okay, give me employee uh, for ID equals to one. Um, if it is a cache hit, um, you return the object there itself, that is step one. In case if it's a cache miss, um, it's not the application responsibility to go to the database unlike the previous time, but the cache, this application, um, which is maintaining that cache, will go to the database um, and reach its value over here, and then return the response. This is read through. Um, this is very similar to write through. Read is for reading information. Uh, write is like saving or storing information in the database and cache. So here, application will write some information. It will not go and talk to directly to the database. It will just write information to cache and it's a cache responsibility to enrich itself and push the changes into the database. Um, uh, the DAX, uh, the Dynamo, DynamoDB X Litter um, uses this strategy of write through cache to maintain you know, sub milli uh, second response time. It's very fast. Okay, um, write around or write back, um, write behind also it is called sometimes, yes, write behind. So um, here it is like, um, it's very similar to what uh, we have previously gone through um, um, with right through. Here also, you this application is like making a lot of, uh, uh, storing all, a lot of information to cache and instead of immediately pushing in database, which right through does, um, right behind it just cushions that uh, load and basically it is stored into cache and in asynchronously in its due course of time, it push that information database. So that's a subtle difference uh, between these two. All right, so these are uh, some of the basic well-known uh, caching strategies. Uh, so one of them which is uh, which we are going to implement is the right through cache. And let's see how we can implement that. Perfect. Um, so basically, um, um, if you guys have followed my previous link, you know how to basically bring up some of the uh, infrastructure components. Like in this case, we will be using Spring Boot um, as a, uh, you know, to write a web application, Postgres database as a database storage system, and we'll be using Redis uh, for uh, the caching. So basically you need um, database and cache to be uh, deployed and running your local environment. I'll be putting the link uh, which previously, which I recorded like last time. Um, there I have explained uh, how to bring a cluster of three uh, node cluster for Kafka and three node cluster for Zookeeper, which is highly uh, resilient, uh, resilient and fault tolerant, which means like even if your port crashes, it can um, recover and your data is not lost. Uh, there I have not covered Redis, but if you follow the same, check out the same project, uh, it's just a matter of going to Redis script and running it. This is pretty much I'm going to do over here. So I just copied the path of that location and then I push it over here. And so some of the um, 
options which uh, I have covered over there, feel free, I'll put that link, uh, feel free to go through that. Um, so hyphen F, uh, so basically if you don't know anything, just like uh, hyphen H is for help, and this tells what are options are available. So hyphen F option is to basically clean restart. Uh, there's nothing that is running in my system, but it's still, it's good to have it like, you know, clean everything because it's a dev environment, we want to um, carry some of the uh, existing data, uh, if that's your use case. So if an F, I uh, clear, uh, kill any process which is running previously data and all that, and then start afresh. And then I want to watch it. So giving the hyphen W options. All right, so this uh, will take some time to start my uh, Redis. And in the meantime, I will also start my Postgres and everything is like I just put an alias on the Postgres, but uh, you can check out the same project, follow my previous video. And it's just a matter of like running this script. So I'm gonna do it over here. Okay, so looks my database is getting created, the Postgres and my Redis. So meanwhile, they are getting created. Let me quickly walk through the um, application uh, part of it. So um, there is one more video which I covered, um, which quickly explains how you can write your very, very basic um, Spring Boot web application. So I'm not gonna spend too much of time explaining it, but in a nutshell, uh, I have this entity, employee with ID and name, and there are some um, Java classes like controller for um, saving that employee information, the post call, and getting any employee. So basically it's a REST convention by ID. Um, service layer is basically, uh, you know, uh, talks to a repository layer to uh, find by uh, name or ID. So pretty much standard. Um, so, <clears throat> so the important thing is the configuration over here. So basically, uh, before going to configure, let's see the application YAML file where we configure uh, the information. So this is a create drop. So whenever I start my application, it will, because it's dev, it will drop anything which is created previously and start afresh by executing this init.sql uh, where I'm not doing anything, just uh, creating a simple employee table, the same what you saw the entity object over here with ID and name. All right, um, so your DB should be up and running. Um, so my DB is like in my VM Minikube machine, so my local machine, um, made a host entry, and my service is listing on 30,000, okay? So let's go to app configuration. All right, um, so basically I'm um, using Redison. So basically you should have your Spring Data and JDS dependencies over here. Um, and then once your application bootstraps, at that time I want this object to be created. And that's where I'm using initialize beam. So it just called once and once this uh, bootstrap um, I create a config object, I tell it where is my Redis. So this is my VM Minikube, it's my local machine, and my uh, Redis master and slave is running on 30010 and 11 code, which we can validate over here. So this is my um, Redis over here, uh, Redis primary. So when it starts, it starts a cluster, one primary node and two secondary nodes. So this is a primary node. And these are the two replicas. And they are listening, the master node the primary listening on 30010, and the replica is listening on 30011. Okay, which you can validate over here. Um, so what, if you have a Redis client in your system, just uh, give a host, uh, mini which is my local host, and on this port, and then you get connected uh, to the database, to the Redis, sorry. So there is nothing, it is empty. Uh, if you want to very validate, you can actually. Uh, connect to slave as well. So this is on one zero port and this is on one one. This will replicate the same thing because the slave of uh, master. So whatever you steer student master, it will get replicated to slave. So this is um, usually I prefer to run um, these things as a clustered objects. All right. So um, once you have this Redison client created, um, it's just a matter of um, okay, we don't use it, so I'll be removing that. We are just using Redison client. 
that is inclined. Okay, sorry, uh, I think this I was trying it. We don't need this at all. Okay, now the finally uh, final thing is like you want to store your employee object. Before I see it, let's quickly show you the service part. This is my service. It uses a repository. Um, previously, you know, to save um, objects into the database, and these are like a standard methods for save, find all, and find by ID. And here, what you're gonna do here, this is clients, Redis and client we just saw. It understands or encapsulates your Redis information. Uh, you give it a cache name. I just gave it test cache uh, for demonstration purpose. And the important thing is the map writer. So basically you're trying to encapsulate, this guy knows about Redis and internally it knows how to store the data into the database if there is a cache miss. So you just see this object, it's a map writer. And once you create the new instance of it, you need to override these two methods, which internally knows how to save your object into the database. So basically, in short, this guy understands your Redis and it understands if uh, the data needs to be stored in your uh, database, how to do that. And now the final piece is what kind of cache you need to use. Um, so basically that comes as map options dot write mode. Uh, if you want write through or um, right behind that can be that strategy can be used over here and then it just returns this beam so which means if uh, you have to save your object the only thing you need to do over here uh, is basically take um, this beam object I'm our map cache of long and employee and just say put uh, with the key and the whole object all together. So here, uh, in short, what it does, this guy will make sure uh, it will push into Redis and it will, it's a write through and then at the same time, it will push into the database as well. All right, so let's see um, it's running, but before that, let's see our database. Okay, if I am able to connect, yes, I am. Okay, let me copy this uh, SQL. A new script. Okay, employee. So currently there is no table. My database is totally empty because I fresh created that. There is no tables at all. So as said, um, when I run because of this init SQL will be run and these structure will be created. Let's do that. I go to demo app and I run that application. It takes a little while to run it, but once this is over, I should be able to find my employees table. All right, so yet not there, not there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Redison client in my service. I think I, the bean which I commented, probably it has been used. Uh, yes, here. So actually I don't need it. I'm gonna comment it out. Um, hope it doesn't give me any compilation problems and let's rerun this application again. Okay, so you can error, you can ignore it, it's just some unsupported thing. Okay, uh, my app is running, uh, listening on for ADAT, it took 13 seconds approximately to start that. I'm just clearing the logs. Hopefully my employee table has been created by this time. Yes, it is. And there's nothing over here. Perfect. Now the only thing is to basically um, make a curl command and you know uh, save some objects which eventually uh, calls this method and it does a put on this object. And we know this object from app config, it understands your Redis. It knows how to write an object into the database if not present and then using the write through strategy. So uh, to make things simple, I already have this scripts included. Uh, you just invoke save employee and pass the ID and name. And this is nothing but base URL. It is like on a local host ATAT and it post this JSON with ID and name. So basically it will uh, create these three employees into the system and because um, it goes through this save method. It will store in Redis as well as 
uh, into the database, we'll, which we will verify. Before that, keys star, um, there is some tummy thing uh, for now. Okay, let me be here. And my employees, there's nothing over here. So let me invoke this script. Sorry, terminal. Enter. So it is making three curl calls, uh, which will post in our web application with this data. So internally, it should be saving three employees into my database, which we can validate here. Yes, I see my three employees with ID one, two, three, the name one, two, and three in the string literals have been created. Okay, they must be gone into uh, Redis as well because this is right through cache. First it will write into cache and then we'll take the database. It is there in database. So I see that test cache has been present over here. It's a cache name uh, which we have given over here. All right. Um, and uh, let's validate if it works for get call as well. Um, so for get um, this, my controller, I'm exposing this rest endpoint and you pass an ID. It basically from my service, it finds by ID and it gets from cache. So let's validate it. So this I'm not gonna, I don't have to save it. So I'm gonna comment it out and uncomment this one where it says find by ID by two, which is it makes a curl call and pass ID two to give me that object. So I can run this script once again. It makes a curl call and then um, I get ID two. Okay, um, so, and let's validate that this is coming from cache and not from the database altogether. I go and directly make change in the database so that, uh, um, I mean, you know, um, the cache will return the same value, not the thing, not the one which is put in the database. So I'm just saying changed value for ID equals to two after updating it, if I query, I see for ID two, my uh, value has been changed. Let's try the um, same command once again. And now we can see that it is not reflecting over here because this is not getting from database, but from cache itself. And by the way, this is an expected behavior uh, because if you go and directly make change in database, which in a running application, uh, nobody does, um, at least for the main um, objects uh, until now there is some kind of a migration. So this is an expected behavior um, if you want latest and greatest value, you basically have to uh, clean your Redis and uh, restart your app. All right, um, that's pretty much uh, on the right through cache. As said, there are other strategies which can be tried like right behind our side uh, by referring this one. All right guys, if you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.